Dennis Banks is a Native American leader, lecturer, teacher, activist, and author, and is a member of the Anishinaabe tribe. A lot of people think that uh, AIM, the American Indian Movement, was started after Wounded Knee, but you actually started it in 1968, correct? In July of 1968, yeah. And what, did, what was the reasons that you originally started AIM? Well, uh, I was in prison in 1966, convicted of robbing a grocery store, uh, of burglarizing the store. But, um, and so I went to prison for that. Uh, they sentenced me to five years. But my rap partner was white. And he walked out of that prison. I mean, walked out of the courtroom, and he wasn't sentenced to prison at all. That was my first real reality bite of racism in the courts in Minnesota. And you always see it, you always think about it, but this for me it was the reality. And while in prison, I began to study about my own people. And I began to read paper. Every day there was pictures of huge marches going on, civil rights marches, and also human rights, and also people protesting against the war in Vietnam. I was looking for, see if there was anybody speaking for Native people in all these marches and these big events, but nothing. And I wanted to be part of a movement that would address the issues that Native people were facing. And so when I got out, I got out in May of 1968, and I, I went door to door hoping that I could start something because I wanted to be part of a movement. Uh, I went knocking door to door, in South Minneapolis, North Minneapolis, and in, on July 29th, we came together in a small little place like this. I thought maybe we'd get 50, 60 people to the meeting. But there was maybe three, 400 people came to that meeting. We couldn't, they couldn't get in. I mean, we, we had to have a microphone with a speaker outside. But that became the first meeting of the American Indian Movement. Um, People were sick and tired of the abuse that Native people were going through. And many people that, that stood up were from the prisons, like myself. And we weren't afraid of jail terms. We weren't afraid of prison terms anymore. We weren't afraid of that. And so we began to speak and speak loud. And, and then all of a sudden confrontations came. And, but we still marched. We marched against police brutality. And many times, you know, push coming to shove with the police. And they began to push us hard, but the, our young people stood. How old were you at the time? I was 32, 32. When, when the American Indian Movement was formed. But the popularity of the movement began very quickly. I mean, there was chapters that were springing up in Cleveland. And Russell Means started one in Cleveland. This is 1969, about a year after we got started. We're starting the chapters. And so when, and then in February then uh, of 72, when the, when the incident happened at Gordon, Nebraska, when Yellow Thunder was killed, then the people started to come. And we put out a national call then for people to come to, to Gordon. And maybe as many as 2,000 people showed up for that huge demonstration that we had at Gordon against the police against the FBI, against the marshals, the townspeople, the BIA police, the tribal council, because nobody wanted to investigate the death of, uh, of Raymond Yellow Thunder. Nobody. And so when AIM, AIM was the last resort. They, they, when, when, we got, when we got there, the violence had already been committed. The murder had been committed. But the inaction of of officials, law enforcement officials, was, was, it, was, it was massive, massive inaction. They, they weren't doing anything. And so when AIM came, we began to unravel. We got our uh, independent pathologists to come, and we began to tell a different story of what happened to Raymond Yellow Thunder. But we weren't telling it the facts that were being revealed. 
the pathologist said he didn't die of exposure. This man was beaten to death. And that's what we said. There has been a lot uh, in, the, in the news over the years, bad publicity, misrepresentation about AIM. A lot of, the, a lot of what we hear, the general public, is that the AIM is nothing but a bunch of terrorists. In my own personal experience, after meeting many of you who belong to AIM, I found that not to be the case at all. Within AIM, we always joke about this one point, is that the FBI said that one time that uh, AIM was the number one terrorist group in, in, in the United States. And we, didn't, we, didn't, we don't know how we got to number one. That it was a complete mystery to us. But in 19, oh, I think it was 1979 or 1980, AIM was number five, the number five terrorist group in the, in the United States. We did nothing, we changed nothing with our policy. We, we, we traveled as we did, didn't do anything else different from 73, but all of a sudden we were number five. And we used to sit around and joke, say, what did we do wrong? <laughs> Why did we, how can we drop from one to five? But it was absurd. For, for us to even be thought of terrorists. Mm -hmm. but because we felt, and we, when we've proven through the courts, that it was the government that was at fault all along. I mean, they were the ones that were supplying Wilson and his goons with ammunition. And they were supplying them with, with weapons and firepower. And this is, this, you know, this is, had been it's well known now. I mean, the, the head goon admitted this. Of course, one of the ways in which uh, the powers to be uh, can, can win is using the media to, to uh, you know, demonize uh, anyone who's speaking out for truth or justice. And they have the power to do that, unfortunately. Uh, and I still have in my file the, the Nixon papers, White House papers, is, you know, set in motion uh, actions against the American Indian movement that will destroy them. And one of them is to find Dennis Banks and use every, use the weight of the government to prosecute this man. I was on, I was put on trial for nine and a half months in, in in St. Paul, Minnesota, because of what happened on Wounded Knee. I was, they charged me with 16 felonies. Uh, I was facing um, 250 years in prison, plus a life sentence. And Russell Means and I used to joke about, about that. We'd say, well, what should we do first if we're convicted? Should we do the 250 years, or should we do the life sentence? It, it was just absurd to look at how they were trying to conduct a, a criminal trial against us. And, and the judge from South Dakota, who I thought was very racist in the beginning, he threatened to throw me in jail in the beginning of the trial for the duration. And uh, he didn't. But through the course of that nine month trial, he saw the government, he saw how they worked, and he was very angry he was very angry at, uh, throughout the trial, he became a very angry man, not at us, at the prosecution. And in the end, he said, I didn't know how low this government would stoop to gain a conviction. He said, the, the, the purpose of a trial is not to gain, gain a conviction, is to administer justice so that it's equal to all parties. He said, but now I know. And he dismissed the charges against us. And he said, and he was very angry for misconduct, by the way. He dismissed against governmental misconduct. And U.S. v. Banks is a very famous case in, within the courts, uh, courts history.